Now because professional wrestling is inherently silly, I like to look at it with a wink and a nudge, unless it's the push of Shane McMahon. But last night's Raw really took the wind out of my sails. Beyond any shadow of any doubt, it was really crap. While we did see a good few matches, in between the ropes, the big things on the show made little to no sense. I'm not even going to mention the amount of times X superstar was drafted to a brand, despite the fact loads and loads and loads of better options were left available to pick. But at least Seth Rollins is going fiend hunting though. <laughs> I'm just really down on the main roster at the minute and last night confirmed my belief that if I didn't do this job, I would just stick to Wednesday nights, NXT, AE Dub. That's all you need for some good wrestling from the Americas. But nevertheless, I'm here to provide a service for you, sexual wang pheasants. So I've seen last night's Raw twice now, all the way through. <laughs> Hit the end roll, will you? <laughs> So we kicked off the show with a really, 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 really long recap of the thing that judging by last week's show, it looked like WWE was just going to lift the carpet up and sweep it under there and forget about it ever happening. It's almost as if they set themselves last week. Let's go to the Winchester, let's have a pint and it'll all blow over. But now on this week's Raw, eight days removed from the thing, it looked like they were trying to forget about. They now air the promo package that presumably they were going to air at the start of last week's Raw before they got scared. It's like going to therapy, isn't it? And you telling the therapist, oh, I'm having issues at the minute because when I was at school, I pissed my pants in the playground and everybody laughed at me. And then your therapist says, to you, oh, just forget about it, man. It's fine. Everyone pisses their pants before you come back for the next therapy session the next week. And before you get your foot through the door, the therapist is there going, ha ha, you pissed your pants. Ha ha. Thanks for bringing up all that again, WWE. But right off the bat on the main show, we see a sign in the crowd from Rick Gonzalez, and also there was a sign there from Kat and her friend. Thank you for your efforts. Next time you go to a show, do what they did, please. No! You! Look here! H-E-R-E. If you're going to spell, spell properly. I don't try to spell it all. So we go to commercial after a hot start at Monday Night Raw. Becky and Charlotte, they are brawling. We come back from that same commercial, though, and Charlotte's music's playing, as if she just made her entrance. They do realise, don't they, that commercial breaks, they don't bring the world to a standstill. And people forgot the things they saw just before that show went to commercial. They do realise that, don't they? And next up, we have Big Vic Joseph telling us that this Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair match is a match where the winner would get the number one draft pick for their brand, so high stakes and all that bollocks. I don't know, they did this last week as well, and of course Seth Rollins won because my brother Bray attacked him from under the ring after hotboxing the place, smoke weed every day. But surely, with Raw getting three picks every round and SmackDown only getting two, because it's fair, they like to tell us, surely, when it comes to matches like this, Raw are always going to win. Because if they don't, their lovely Raw pick, then SmackDown pick, then Raw pick, then SmackDown pick, then Raw pick, would become SmackDown pick, then Raw pick, then SmackDown pick, then Raw pick, then Raw pick. It just wouldn't be groovy, okay? And next up, we have a horrible shock in realization that WWE once again are having a bad case of the first time ever when we were told on commentary that this Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair match is the first time these two lasses have gone one on one on Monday Night Raw. And I'm here to tell you that's not true whatsoever. I did some research, you see, because I'm a, I'm a real boy. Raw episode. 1175 30th of November 2015 Charlotte defeated Becky Lynch Raw episode 1180 the 4th of January 2016 Becky Lynch defeated Charlotte and then finally Raw episode 1192 the 28th of March 2016 Charlotte defeated Becky Lynch that match last night was the fourth singles match those two lasses have had on Raw. And next up we have Dio Madden claiming that Charlotte Flair wants to get a win for her team. The Friday Night Smackdown Smackaroonies. Go on American Sports and your stupid pointless nicknames. But at that time, in that match, when Dio said that line, even though Charlotte was representing Smackdown, because I think she might have been a Smackdown superstar while that wild card bollocks was a thing, I just don't know. 
Maybe she was, I don't know. She wasn't officially assigned to a brand because Charlotte was in Pool 2, the pool that could only be drafted during this week's Raw. And speaking of pools, Dio, even though I've grown to love you, because it's clear that you do not care what you're saying on Raw, you're having a laugh, you're taking the piss out the bollocks that you're watching with your very own eyes. You right now, my friend, are a man in a swimming pool on a lilo, floating on the surface. Where am I? I'm like Joe's, rising up from the dark depths below. You're nearly getting your thing, Bonnie lad. The Fiend! I don't even know if he's a human being! Ah. He is, man, Seth. How are you, will you? And then he goes, I'm going Fiend hunting! <laughs> As Elmer J. Fudd came back on our screens in a way more annoying version. Look at me calling people annoying, eh? The irony. If you go down to the fun house today, be sure of a big surprise. If you go down to the fun house today, you'll never believe your eyes. For every bray that ever there was, I'm scared of him because I'm a child. Because today's the day Seth Rollins is going fiend hunting. But at this moment, I was thinking, thank the Lord above that Michael Cole is on SmackDown these days because you just know all on the minute, every minute, for three whole hours, he would have been sat there saying, Fiend hunting! Isn't it so cool, guys? And next up, we have Big Vic Joseph saying that loud, short, bald man with his machine with funny noises is all in on Seth Rollins, even though that loud, bald, short man with his machine of funny noises didn't even say he was all in on Seth Rollins. And I don't know about you, but this confirms to me, beyond any shadow of any doubt, that Vic Joseph wants to be All Elite. And who can blame him? Oh, so USA do realise that when an act is an established act on WWE TV, they can draft them together as one pick. That makes you wonder why they drafted Alexa Bliss on her own, and then waited a round or two, and then drafted Nikki Cross on her own, and then robbed themselves of a draft pick. Oh no, it doesn't, because of course USA Network, and Raw especially, is the land of the cooks. So the USA Network robbing themselves of a pick for no good reason, that's cook behaviour, because that's the land of the cooks. So hang on a second there, Zelina Vega calls Andrade's missus, who is of course the one and only Charlotte Flair, but Zelina calls Charlotte a horse face, and Andrade stood there going, hey hey, that's a zinger that there, Zelina pal. May he rest in peace because Charlotte would have battered that man when he got backstage. It's been nice knowing you, Andrade. And now it's time for this. Wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank. Hello and welcome back to Wankity Wank, the section of WTF Moments, where you, a sexual wank pheasant, tweet me a WTF moment I have missed, and I give you all the credit because. Thank you goes out to Yinza Pretty for getting in touch, and basically, I'll take your word for it. Now first of all, I like that breaking news thing there, but only when it actually announces real breaking news. Because, Mr. Breaking News ticker thing right there, we learned in that promo from Seth Rollins, that I referenced a long time ago, that he was going to burn it down, and that's not breaking news. Use yourself properly, friend. And next up, we have Jerry Lawler, who is, of course, a man who acts like his shoe size age rather than his age age, actually acting like his age age when he claimed that Bray Wyatt is going to be inside the Firehouse Funhouse. And this was a moment that made me miss me grandparents because that's a thing me grandparents would be saying if they were watching Bray Wyatt live on Raw. Grand. It's good, but it's not quite right. That sort of vibe. Lady Balls does not watch Smackdown confirmed. She claimed that Friday Night Smackdown is going to get a little bit more eco-friendly. And let me tell you, Lady Balls, what you said right there about Daniel Bryan is so the early part of the year. Sassy Mean Girls reference. Daniel Bryan's a babyface now. I think, on SmackDown, so there'll be no mention of that man being eco-friendly because, Lady Balls, your father, dear old wrinkly balls, he wants to see the world burn and vegans, weak vegans, die. Because they don't eat meat and that means they're weak, apparently. And next up, we have the rather shocking realisation that Colin thought his WWE appearance and WrestleMania match in the arm bar happened last year. Braun Strowman, how hard did you hit the man? IWGP and Ring of Honor getting name dropped by a WWE superstar who is doing a promo right down the camera lens on a WWE show. Now I know we've heard the commentary teams mention IWGP and Ring of Honor on commentary in passing during certain matches in the past, 
but this is surely the first time we've seen a big sweaty man shouting IWGP and Ring of Honor right down the camera like Raymond Rowe was there. I still kind of get used to Eric and Ivar. That's Rowan Hansen. And good on WWE, I say, because this adds legitimacy to the Viking Raiders and doesn't just disregard the rest of the professional wrestling world. More of this, please. Now, as I mentioned on a recent episode of WTF Moments, I can't remember Ali even attempting to do a 0-5-4 since the time he need Daniel Bryan right in the side of the tet, which is French, apparently. For head. And because of that, I think the powers that be in WWE have stopped that man from doing that move. Yet that graphic there, it says otherwise, and I don't know what to think. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> oh, now it's time for this. Wankity wank, <gasps> wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank. Welcome back to Wankity Wank, and once again, this time with Danny Papas. What a delightful name. I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> and next up we have Vic Joseph saying that he's never seen Eric Young back away from too many superstars and this left me asking one question Vic Joseph how have you seen Eric Young even remotely near any other WWE superstars I was sat there thinking that bloke retired has been used that little recently first let me assure you that I'm alive and well I've been living happily these past eight months. He's alive! And next up, we have it established that Trevor, big old ricochet, of course, reminds Dio Madden, most of all, of Spider-Man when it comes to superstars that Trevor could remind Dio Madden of. Vic Joseph then pipes up and says, Well, Dio, I've never seen Spider-Man planted in the center of a wrestling ring like that. And I was thinking that Vic should get locked in a cage with Bonesaw for saying things like that. Because as we all know, Bonesaw, he is the freak show! Can it do, macho man? He got you for three minutes! Three minutes of playtime! <laughs> Can it do, macho man? And then we got to this moment of the night. What a peculiar turn things took on Raw. And basically, I'm just going to read out what Lana said for the WTF moments, because that's all I need to do, really. She said, I like it harder in terms of that massage she was getting there, but the way she said it, it sounded like she was talking about the sex. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the, the masseuse lady goes, I can go deeper if you wanted. And then Lana said, yes, I like it deeper. Like she was talking about the penis going into her twinkle cave. And I should mention that on the stream we did for this episode of Raw, I learned that Nikki Bella calls her, her vagina a twinkle cave. So that's something you live and learn, don't you? And then we get to Bobby Lashley who was massaging Lana's calf because that's the sexy part of the body, the calf. He was saying to Lana, this is so much fun. And when Bobby said that, I was thinking I should call the police and have the police check Bobby Lashley's basement for bodies because that was creepy as piss. And then woof, things got hot and sweaty right now, boys and girls, because Lana, who was laying on her front, flipped over onto her back and while she was doing so, Bobby, that cheeky little sex pest, lifts up the towel and looks at Lana's presumably naked body. And I know right at this moment, I was thinking to myself, we all say the Attitude Era is better, but that bollocks there, that would belong in the crap category of the Attitude Era with stuff like PMS and all that malarkey. And if you don't know what PMS is in terms of the Attitude Era, just Google it. And next up we have Jerry Lawler saying that no boxing champion like Tyson Fury has ever stood toe to toe with a WWE superstar, John T. Are you sure about that? Jerry. <laughs> and I know that Dio Madden tried to backpedal on Jerry Lawler's behalf and make everything he was saying make sense, but still, it was silly, it was silly for Jerry to say that, wasn't it? And next up we have Braun Strowman proving to Tyson Fury that Braun Strowman knows some things about Tyson Fury. And that's when Braun Strowman says, I know you've got one of the biggest egos I've ever seen. <laughs> and that there is coming from the man who calls himself the monster among men and stuff like a sexy thick meat castle. Aye, Braun. And first of all, I know that Tyson Fury was just having a bit of a play along with Braun Strowman when he was struggling to break that pen. But I don't know about you, but I was thinking, Tyson, get the pen of the people who write these roles these days and snap that pen and replace that pen with Triple H's pen that he used to throw at NXT. Because Triple H's pen is the best of all the pens in the WWE. 
Dragon Gate getting a mention live on WWE Raw. And I don't know about you, but the song A Whole New World was passing through my mind. Cedric Alexander, a WWE superstar who is second to none, Big Vic Joseph says. Although he is clearly second to the likes of AJ Styles and Big Baldy Bastard Baron Corbin, Andrew McIntyre and now Buddy Murphy, who he's lost to in recent weeks. Work that one out, Vic. Bet that thing ends in count out. She hasn't been seen in so long, I thought she was called Dead Morgan right now, but Liv, it's nice to see you're alive and well, and I cannot see your baldy scalp. I knew I had to pick the best, Natalia said. She's not the best though, Natalia. I knew I had to pick somebody with my same drive and determination, Natalia said. You're always having a go at the woman in a really bitchy way on Instagram, Natalia. I had to pick a woman who took me to my limits. Natalia said. Because I'm Natalia, and in kayfabe, I've just realised that none of the logical picks who would have made sense and are baby faces and nice people actually like me as a person. So I had to go and ask Lacey Evans. After what we've seen over the last 17,000 years, why, first of all, would Natty go and ask Lacey to be a partner? And why would Lacey say, go on then, pal, I'll be a partner, despite the fact you tried to murder me off the side of the stage on last week's role? It was just last week. And then we have the other reasons that come into play with this nonsensical pick. Lacey is a heel who looks down on everybody but herself and her family. Natty is a baby face. I don't know, this might be harsh, but nobody cares about Natalia whatsoever, do they? If this was an attempt at a face turn by WWE, it was never going to work. If you want to turn Lacey face, just have her go and save Becky Lynch. And even though that would make no sense whatsoever, it made just as much sense as this pick from Natty, but actually, it would have worked, wouldn't it? Because people care about Becky. I'm sorry, Natty, but it's the truth, isn't it? And then we have the fact that Lacey was drafted to SmackDown just last week. She shouldn't even have been at Raw. And I think I've covered all the bases here, and I know you at home, some of you at least, will be thinking about how the bar... Did I used to dab for them? I can't remember. How the bar became a thing. But the difference is, Seamus and Cesaro were locked in a proper programme. Lacey and Natalia were just having a series of matches that nobody cared about, and there was no good reason to be having those matches anyway. And what's more, that series of pointless matches that nobody really cared about ended with attempted murder. But seven days later, the best pals. And I don't care that that tag team there could well be called the cat and the hat. It's just bollocks. And the worst thing was this meaningless match that took place on last night's Raw between the Cat and the Hat and the Kabuki Warriors lasted for 17 whole days, even though nobody cared about the thing. At least Asuka looked great with her new face paint and whatnot. That's all I was taking from this. And then they did a thing we never thought would happen in real life. They had Lacey Evans lose to Asuka via roll-up. Asuka, the great Asuka, had to, <laughs> had to resort to a roll-up to beat Lacey Evans. And then we got to the PS de resistance of the night and we were wondering since the middle of June when the Firefly Fun House started, how long would it take for WWE to ruin the Firefly Fun House? And the second another WWE superstar was able to step into the Firefly Fun House and be seen on that set that was the moment the Firefly Fun House was ruined, in my opinion. I thought this would be a place where Bray and Bray alone would know where to go. That vibe there was just telling us that the Firefly Fun House is just a set backstage and people go on there if they dare. Seth found the set and he, he waddled on. Ugh. It just takes so much of the magic and the presentation away, doesn't it? And I've seen people online saying, well, this was a result of Seth Rollins descending into the same dark and disturbing place Bray Wyatt is mentally. But this is Seth Rollins. He's an angry small child. He's a reckless man. I don't know. And then we get to the moment where supposed top babyface in the company, Seth Rollins, destroyed the most popular thing WWE have been doing for the past three or four months. Talk about being tone deaf with the things you make happen on your show. Why would the top babyface destroy the most popular thing that's on your programming? Beyond any doubt. How does the top baby face in your company come out from this situation being liked by anybody because he's robbed everybody of so much joy and he killed a rabbit in the process. Seth, you're an arsehole. Yet again, this was just more stuff to actively piss off the fans. And this, in my opinion, was the biggest heel turn of Seth Ron's career. And this was the man who brought the, brought the original shield down. 
This piss is right in the eye of that. And even in kayfabe, this is weird Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar. You're not a fighting champion, I'll be a fighting champion. Survive and prosper. <laughs> but then he goes backstage and commits arson and attempted murder. And what about Bray's neighbours, Seth? Let's pretend for a second that the Firefly Funhouse is in a street. Sesame Street, why the hell not? This fire, what impact would that have on Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch and people like that, eh, Seth? You didn't think about that? This isn't like Randy Orton going into the woods and burning a random shed, man. Seth Rollins, of course, is just doing what he's been told to do, but the character right now is a massive arsehole who has robbed us of the best thing about WWE TV today. Un but it, it, it's, how does he... <sighs> And we end with the baffling list of superstars who are now classed as free agents and who weren't good enough to be drafted while the likes of the Lucha House Party, for example, they were good enough to be drafted. But AOP, massive AOP, Matt Hardy, Cesaro, the Iconics, Luke Harper, Fire and Desire, Drake Maverick, Dana Brooke, Hawkins and Ryder, Mojo Rawley, No Way Jose, maybe that's a bad one, but Sarah Logan as well. They weren't good enough to be drafted, but the Lucha House Party were. No words, are there? And that's it for the WTF moments from this week's Raw. It's just deflating, isn't it? You want it to be so good, but apparently they just want it to be so bad. Even though they don't, that would be stupid. But it comes across that way, doesn't it? I'll see you for some AEW on Thursday. We'll have a laugh. We'll have a laugh then. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. And if you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can place us on Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Hit subscribe and join us.